How's it going, Rogues Geller, and welcome to another Flesh and Blood video here on Red Zone Rogue. Today, we have some really exciting new Flesh and Blood news to talk about, including a brand new Flesh and Blood trailer for the upcoming set, Dusk Till Dawn. The trailer itself is absolutely gorgeous, and we'll show off the trailer in its entirety here in today's video and talk about some recent announcements that James White made at Pro Tour Baltimore. We'll also show off some of the really exciting stuff that the Judge program is actually doing. We recently had uh, Joshua Scott, the LSS Rules and Policy Manager on the Living Legends podcast, and he talked about some really cool upcoming stuff that, well, he hinted at, and I think we are starting to see some of the things that he hinted at with brand new Judge Booster Packs. Yeah, we got a lot of exciting stuff to talk about today, so buckle in. This is going to be a really fun one. If you'd like to support the channel, if you like what I do, please subscribe to the channel, comment down below. If you'd like to support further, well, I have a Patreon, we have channel memberships here where you get access to some really cool Flesh and Blood emotes, and a bunch of other stuff, including an online store. So, we're not going to beat around the bush too much. Without further ado, I think the first thing that we should do is show off the new Dusk Till Dawn trailer because that's going to be the big bulk of what we talk about today. So, roll the trailer. Dude, how awesome was the trailer? Prism looks amazing. I want to give a huge shout out to the artist there, Livia Prima, an artist that um, I've had really, really good interactions with. She's an incredible artist and a very, very nice person. Met her in person uh, at the previous World Championship, and she's also done a couple custom shikishi, shikishi drawings for me of uh, Prism, of course, and Dromai. And you know what? In the future, I might have to ask her to do another one, but absolutely amazing gorgeous artwork of the new prism card that will be in dusk till dawn now we don't know actually we don't actually know what she does probably revealed during spoiler season but uh, we do have a lot of information to talk about so uh, that card is actually called prism advent of thrones prism is the monarch or at least one of the monarchs in the war of the monarch which is what this um, narrative is continuing, basically. So this is actually the second set in a trilogy of the War of the Monarchs. Monarch being number one, this being number two, and then the third one, well, I guess we'll have to find out. And so basically, I'm just going to be read, reading a bunch of information that I got um, and compiled from the event here on my phone. So uh, the release date for Dust Till Dawn is July 14th. It is a 236 card expansion set, which is very big for an expansion set, actually. So it's a very big, very big set. Uh, it's going to have one Fabled, eight Legendaries, and ten Marvels. That's a lot of Marvels. That is some um, Uprising levels of Marvels. So we might be able to get pull them more frequently. Once again, we don't really know yet, but it sounds really, really cool. Uh, Dusk Till Dawn will also have a pre-release. So even though it is a not draftable or uh, sealed set, it's not a limited set, it will have a pre-release with Monarch. So you will be playing Monarch Draft at the Dusk Till Dawn pre-release, and you will be able to get Dusk Till Dawn pack support. So basically you draft Monarch, and then you get pack prize support uh, with Dusk Till Dawn. Now, I really hope that LGS's make it so that everyone 
gets at least some packs from Dust Till Dawn. Like, I hope it's not just like you get Monarch and you go 0 3 and you have you, you just leave with nothing. That would suck. So, I have no idea what the structure is, but hopefully, at least if you show up, you at least get a couple packs, maybe maybe three packs or whatever of Dust Till Dawn. Um, and then maybe like a pack per win or something like that. Um, we also know that uh, we've seen Prism, uh, Advent of Thrones artwork, once again absolutely gorgeous artwork in my opinion i made a tweet about this that has got a little bit of traction but um flesh and blood is one of the if not the best looking card game on the market now obviously i'm preaching to the choir here i am a flesh and blood diehard uh so yeah but i truly believe that the creative team for legend story studios is um does not get the recognition that they deserve they are incredible from the people writing the stories to the people designing the card borders and frames and like the the ui of flesh and blood to the artists and the art direction um amazing absolutely amazing amazing and they get better every set and they already started pretty good and now they're like world class easily like some of the best if not the best it, it's astounding this prism by the way look at this this prism this is like normal border prism it's not even like a marvel fancy thing and it's it's one of the best cards i've seen this year amazing uh, we also know there's going to be a another rune blade hero shadow rune blade not chain this hero is called vincent uh, we also know this is a female character but we have not seen the art yet and that is a good segue to that uh, the fact that we are getting a the the product reveal of Dust Till Dawn uh, this coming, I think it's Sunday for me, Monday for New Zealand folks. So uh, the first, right, uh, May May first. So expect another video after that drops, probably within like I don't know an hour or so of it dropping, depending on where I am and what I'm doing. But um, I'm really really excited for that because they have hinted that we will see the the vincent artwork i'm really excited to see a really cool shadow room blade female character very very cool okay so let's talk about something that's weird but cool but we'll, we'll talk about it i have thoughts as someone who collects artist proofs i have thoughts about this next thing so there are going to be 10 prism uh sculptor of arc light and 10 chain bound by shadow so the original two Chain and uh, Prism. So they're the original two, uh, and that's the adult versions of them. There's going to be ten of each of them. Cold foil, serialized, hand-drawn artist sketches by Livia Prima and Federico Musetti. Um, they're going to be available only in Europe, NA, and Brazil. And I don't... They didn't really say how we get them. I assume randomly in booster packs. That is my assumption with these things. And what they feel like to me are artist proofs. Because what, what's an artist proof? It's basically serialized, uh, customized, hand-drawn um, from the artist. And that's exactly what these are. But these ones are cold foil, and then they're also serialized. But they are hand-drawn. So they're, they're basically like artist proofs, but I imagine they are gonna be legal for tournament play, whereas art, artist proofs are not. And so I think that for me, at least uh, my first impressions of these, that's the big distinction, is that these serialized cards are gonna be legal for play, whereas artist proofs are not. Also, they're cold foil. I wonder if the art is just gonna be, I'm very curious to see what these things look like. Very curious, but both uh, Livia Prima and Federico, I've met them both actually, both incredibly lovely people. I have some of their proofs and, and whatnot already here and uh, some signed cards and all that good stuff. Great artists, and I know they can make this stuff look incredible. So uh, very curious to see how everyone reacts to that kind of stuff. For me, I'm just like, yeah, I got artist proofs, but my artist proofs are not legal for, for play. Um, all right, so more news to talk about so worlds we still don't know yet we actually still don't have a location for it i would imagine it's because they're still finalizing and trying to get the the venue booked 100 percent that is the only reason i can think of as to why they haven't announced it yet they probably haven't 100 percent confirmed the location so that's you know it is what it is um so 
this is some stuff that was said during the James White interview. And so we're going to go through this pretty quickly. If you'd like to see the full interview or the full of everything we're talking about here uh, on Mansant's YouTube channel, he did stream both of the, the things. He did stream the, um, like the opening ceremony and he also streamed the Q&A. So if you want all this information straight from the cat's mouth, uh, the, cat, the cat being James White, I guess, uh, go check, go check Mansant's channel. All right. So, we, we, like I said, we've compiled some things, and I just kind of, you know, took, took my big my big takeaways from it. So, worlds still be, uh, still to be determined. Also, no Spectre returning in Dust Till Dawn, and they're probably not going to be doing a lot with it in the future. This is smart. Uh, Spectre is a very unfun mechanic. Uh, it's a good and powerful mechanic, but it is not fun to play with. Though James White did say that he attributes a lot of the power of it being because of Luminaris, and that does make a sense. It makes it makes it so that they can also attack and be really annoying. But they're still really annoying to deal with. The fact that they eat your turn is just super annoying and um, very, very not fun, especially for new players who don't kind of understand how it works. Um, the Codices, you know, Codex of Blood Rot, Codex of Frailty, were made to be strong, as you would expect. <laughs> they're good because they made them to be good. Um, and so, like, yeah, they know Codex of Frailty is good. That's by design. Um, and you know what? I'm cool with it. Uh, you know, I'm a ranger and assassin stan, and, you know, our classes have not... Well, assassin's a new class, but ranger hasn't been good. Um, if at all, ever. I mean, Lexi's been pretty good, but she's been good because of ice for the most part, because ice is very good, and all of the other ice heroes are also very good. Oldham and Icelander. So, like... Yeah, I like that these traditionally weak classes have good cards. Um, it's funny because people are always like, oh, our ranger needs better cards, and then Codex of Frailty comes out. They're like, no, not like that. <laughs> not like that. No. All right, so we also have uh, uh, Flick Knives was the most nerfed card in Outsiders. Someone asked about, like, what, what's the card that got, like, downgraded the most, and they said Flick Knives. Um, I'm very curious to see the first iteration of Flick Knives. I think the card is still pretty good. Um, but I want to see how, I want to see how be much better it was. That's just, I'm really interested to see. Um, there's going to be a new Dorinthia specialization in Dusk Till Dawn. So, you know, more support for heroes outside of Shadow uh, Runeblade and Light Illusionist. Um, notably, we did not see any mention of Chain at all, um, and the prism that we have seen is Young. We have not seen an adult version, so there's a lot of interesting stuff going on there. Um, let's see. They are not yet ready for a Flesh and Blood show or movie because they are currently focus focusing on the core of Flesh and Blood, and that is just making a good game, which I think is very smart and shows that they understand what they are, even though like everyone, including me, obviously, would be incredibly stoked to see a flesh and blood um, show a la Arcane or something like that. Arcane, Cyberpunk Edge Runners, something like that would be amazing, frankly, like absolutely amazing. But, you know, they're focusing on what matters the most right now and they are still a small indie company right so focusing on the game and making sure the game is good is very smart and it is a very tempered approach i have a feeling that a lot of other companies would have like jumped at the opportunity to to do this and maybe gotten a little in over their heads and ended up with like not a great product or something like that so um i think this is good i think this is smart but it is still something on their radar and something that they want to do and that's, I think, what's most important is that it's something they're looking at when they're ready. And that gives me a lot of confidence that, you know, when they're ready, it will be good. So uh, I hope they're really picky, uh, like choosy about it, right? I hope they choose like a really good production studio. Oh, if they're like going like a more like anime style, like Ufotable or something. Oh my God, dude. Imagine, just imagine like a flesh and blood. It doesn't necessarily have to be like anime, but like with a really, really, really good anime studio like uh, Ufotable, or Ufotable, however you want to pronounce their name. Um, oh, dude, or Mappa or something. Oh my God, okay. Anyway, we're getting into some, some other territory here. 50% um, of the heroes will and will not have talents 
moving forward. And I think it's pretty cool. Uh, I think there's a lot of design space for heroes with talents and heroes without talents. There's a lot of flavor baked into that. Um, currently, my favorite hero in the entire game, uh, Uzuri, is, has no talent, but um, maybe we'll get a talented assassin at some point. Um, I think it's just really exciting, and I, and I do like how they're making it so that Heroes with no talents and heroes with talents are both good and viable, right? Uh, Azalea is one of the, the best heroes in the game right now. No talent. Um, yeah, okay, so, and then uh, we will be having Canadian organized play support uh, and big events like a calling coming up in the next year or so. I think there's going to be more stuff at the tail end of 2023 and bigger stuff in 2024. So huge shout to all of the Canadian fans out there, Bill and... All, all, all the the whole can Canadian flesh and blood crew, and then the final question is was about brute support, and James White said blue sixes are busted. And I wrote I wrote blue sixes are busted. LOL. So um, yeah, they know and they've tried it, and apparently it's just too good. It's just too good. Um, and James made a joke. He's like, yeah, you're not gonna play it to attack. You're gonna do other stuff with it. And yeah. That's what they're going to do. Um, I, I have confidence that it'll appear at some point more like blue six attacks um, for, for the Brutes. Maybe someday it'll be Brutes' time to shine and they'll be the, at the top of the meta. I hope not because Reinar is very, very unfun to play against. It's fun to play as Reinar, intimidating your whole opponent's hand. But as the opponent, it's very unfun to have an uninteractable turn where you're just like, well, guess I have no hand. I, I, I don't do anything. We're playing Hearthstone now. It's your turn. I'm just going to not do anything. So, um, yeah, <laughs> this is a little, little rant. I like Reinar, but you gotta admit, for the opponent, just, it's, it's not that fun, right? Um, could be worse, could be worse. At least you'll die quickly, right? Um, and, oh, and so the last thing I want to talk about is the, um, are the cool stuff that the judges are getting. So there's going to be something called a judge pack, and I'll show the images here. So Judge Pack Season 1, it's a pack that has uh, the potential to have six different cards. Uh, I think there's only one card per pack. So it's like six card prize pool, or six card pool, one card per pack. And the, we already know that uh, Therion, Magister of Justice, is going to be in there, as well as a new weapon, uh, the Gavel of Natural Order, as well as a cold foil pummel with a new border that looks rad as hell. Um, and just in case you didn't know, the Therion Magister of Justice, I'll read what he does real quick here. It says, uh, the first time another hero destroys a card they don't control, you can pay two. If you do, they destroy a non-hero permanent they control. So it's kind of like an eye for an eye thing. Uh, and this is a light adjudicator hero. This is the hero that we mentioned briefly on the Living Legends podcast with Joshua Scott. And we also have an adjudicator weapon. Notably, this is not a light adjudicator weapon, so Typhanus can use this. This is the Gavel of Natural Order, and it says uh, pairs with an offhand, so you can equip this with an empty, or you can equip this with an offhand, which is really interesting, and I expect to see that design space explored in, like, official, official Flesh and Blood heroes going forward. I can, I can definitely see, like, a cleric or something like that with uh, a mace or a hammer or something, and then they have, like, an offhand or something. Um, and it says, uh, once per turn action, two to attack, it attacks for two base, but it also says whenever an opponent plays or activates their first card or ability each turn, if it's not their turn, put a plus one counter on this. At the beginning of your end phase, remove all plus one counters from this. So it, it gets bump, bump, pumped up for every time an opponent plays something not on their turn, right? But once per turn. So in a multiplayer game, the more players there are, the more chances you have to pump up the gavel, um, it, it's like a romping club, basically. If people do it a lot, it's a romping club. Um, yeah, it's a, it's a fun card. I think the design space is really cool. Um, and then we have one final card, the Proclamation of Abundance, which is um, an offhand, it's an adjudicator offhand, and an action for three resources, destroy this, each hero draws up to their intellect, which is really, really interesting in Ultimate Pit Fight because you can do a thing where someone had to block with their whole hand and then you can crack this. It's only an action, but you can crack this to maybe give them the resources to like, you know, crack back on someone who made them block with their whole hand or something like that. It's a really cool card for Ultimate Pit Fight. And this card will be um, sent to community leaders and selected, and, and selected premier... Um, like judging events and that kind of stuff. So it's going to be given to, um, you know, judges and whatnot. So, yeah, 
Uh, lots of really cool stuff to talk about. I will be coming back on probably Sunday or Monday to talk about the uh, Dust Till Dawn announcement. I'm really excited to see what they have in store. I think we're gonna see multiple new cards, including that art that everyone talked about That's that, with the character that everyone thinks is Dorinthia, that uh, James White confirmed, not Dorinthia. I have a feeling it's just gonna be like a, an attack action of some sort, but We'll see. We'll see. Really exciting stuff for Flesh and Blood. Can't wait for the new set. Love the vibe. Even though, like, you know, I, my, my favorite heroes are Uzuri and, like, Lexi. Still a huge, huge fan of Flesh and Blood lore. And I love just seeing all the cool new stuff that they're coming out with. And also, like, this prism. It's, it's insane. I, I gotta get a print. I gotta get a print of this and get Livia Prima to sign it or something. Like, it's gonna go up on my walls. It, it's so beautiful, so... Thank you so much for watching today. Let me know what you think about all this cool stuff in the comments down below. And we'll see you later.